everyone. Today this is a quick review of your RNA objectives. Specifically this video is dealing with objective number one, which asks you to describe three main types of RNA and their functions. So let's begin with a comparison of DNA and RNA. So here's a typical Venn diagram. The orange circle is all the DNA information, and the green circle is all the RNA information, and where they overlap are the commonalities between the two. So let's begin with that. Both DNA and RNA are considered to be nucleic acids. They're both composed of nucleotides. Each of the nucleotides contains a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Specifically, the bases they have in common would be adenine, guanine, and cytosine. Both DNA and RNA are made in the nucleus, and both are important sources of genetic information. Now let's consider the thing specific just DNA. DNA is considered the ultimate instructions for all of your traits. In terms of gene expression, it's locked in the nucleus, so it's nice and protected. There's one form of DNA. This form is a double helix, which is composed of two separate sides that are linked together by hydrogen bonds. Each of those sides is made of chains of nucleotides. The sugar found in DNA nucleotides is deoxyribose and a unique base found only in DNA would be thymine. Now let's consider RNA. If DNA is the ultimate instructions, RNA would be the usable form of those instructions. Because it's necessary to be used by the cell, it can leave the nucleus. There's three different forms of RNA which we'll discuss a little bit later on. Each RNA is composed of one chain of nucleotides, unlike DNA which are the two sides. The sugar found in RNA is ribose, and a unique base for RNA is uracil, instead of thymine. Now let's examine three different types of RNA. If you look at this one over here, this is the messenger RNA, abbreviated little m, big RNA. You can see that it's a long, thin ribbon composed of individual nucleotides. The unique nucleotide they're pointing out here is uracil because this is not found in DNA. But again, it's a long, thin ribbon, and the intent of messenger RNA is to be a readable form of the DNA's instructions. This is assembled in the nucleus, and it actually carries out its function in the cytoplasm, specifically in the ribosome within the cytoplasm. So these readable instructions are sent from the nucleus to the ribosomes where they be read to build a protein. The second type of RNA makes up the ribosomes. This is ribosomal RNA. And if you look at this ribosome, you can see clearly that there are two subunits. The lower, smaller subunit, composed of RNA, and the upper, big unit, compa uh, also composed of RNA as well. Now, as you know, the ribosomes are the protein factories of the cell. So their job is to read messenger RNA's instructions in order to assemble amino acids in the proper sequence to actually build the protein. However, the ribosomes cannot do that job unless they have a supply of the building materials for making proteins, which are amino acids. Now comes our third type of RNA, and this is called transfer RNA. The job of transfer RNA is to actually transport the amino acids that are needed by the ribosome to build the proper protein. So every time that the ribosome reads a particular codon, it sends a signal to transfer RNA to transport a particular amino acid to the ribosome so it can be linked together into a polypeptide chain. Now let's examine the process of transcription. First of all, transcription, the process of building RNA by using DNA as a template, actually occurs within the nucleus, because of course that's where the DNA is locked away. So if we look at this diagram, you'll see here that number one is our strand of DNA. It's that blue information and it's double helix over here, but I can see in this picture right over here that it's being unzipped. So number one, that is your template DNA. The green blob in the background, which is number two, is the enzyme responsible for getting transcription to get going. This is called RNA polymerase, and RNA polymerase does a couple jobs. RNA polymerase does a few jobs. The first job it does is to unzip the DNA, which means it's going to break the hydrogen bonds that are connecting the DNA nucleotides together. Once the hydrogen bonds are broken, then RNA polymerase can start to add these RNA nucleotides to the complementary side of the DNA molecule. 
Now, on the DNA molecule, there are two different sides. This one up here, number three, that's the inactive side. We're not even going to use that side during the transcription process. It's completely inactive, and therefore pretend like it doesn't even exist, although it certainly does. The side that we're most interested in is number four. That's our actual template, and that's the active side of DNA. And as you can see, RNA polymerase, this enzyme, is attaching these RNA nucleotides to the active side only of the DNA. The DNA template is truly the active side, and because of this, the RNA's nucleotides will be assembled in a very specific order based on this DNA code. So RNA polymerase unzips the DNA to break the hydrogen bonds. It then adds the appropriate RNA nucleotides to the active side temporarily. Then after the RNA was assembled, it's the job of RNA polymerase to make sure that they were assembled in the proper order. So RNA polymerase then proofreads the information. Again, this is transcription. The function of transcription is to build RNA using the active side of DNA as a template. This takes place in the nucleus. The enzyme involved would be RNA polymerase, and the actual template for making the messenger RNA would be the active side of DNA. Thank you very much.